What's going on everybody? I'm back with another analysis and this analysis is going to be a cool one. We have pictures from multiple camera angles for everybody. So be sure to stick around to watch the whole video as we're going to look at it from multiple angles. So before we start, check out my book. It's on Amazon. It's online. There's a link in the description below and be sure to check out Keyframe. It's how I made this video with all the annotations. So if you wanna make content, this is a great, easy to use software for you, but let's get right into it. So for, right from the start, we see Belgium sticking with their back three in the build-up phase. And now the key aspect of their game was their double pivot. And with Tillisman and Axel Witzel, having the freedom to alternate and stagger themselves to create a double pivot, but also having the freedom to advance one of the two of them to then occupy a higher position up the field, take advantage of Eden Hazard's positioning between defenders, and then create space for the weak side player. So as we see here, Axel Witzel moving a little higher and occupying space between the lines created by Eden Hazard. Then this gave more freedom to players like Kevin De Bruyne to drop between the line and almost create a midfield three. Then we have Lukaku and our wing backs holding the height and width of the structure. Portugal out of possession, they went with their back four, which soon became a back five, which would then become a back six very deep when they would defend in front of their own goal. So here moving out of the midfield third into a deeper position, we see them going to more of a back five. Then we see our four midfielders playing a little bit more man oriented here, staggering themselves, trying to create access. We see Renato Sanchez jumping to create pressure on the ball, which then causes more of the midfielders to slide over and create pressure. And that's how Axel Witzel will get free between the lines. And we have Ronaldo holding the height in the team and doesn't have too much defensive responsibilities. So as we see it from a different perspective, we have our back four, which would then be created a back five with our wide midfielder dropping to then track the run of the wing back coming from a deeper position. Then as we see the staggering of our midfield to then gain access to the ball, Renato Sanchez crossing vertical planes to then create access to the ball while other midfielders are pinned in deeper positions by Kevin De Bruyne. And from this angle, we can see a little bit better how when the Portuguese midfield is dragged into the wide area to create diagonal compactness to press the ball into wide areas, we see then Axel Witzel staggering himself, taking advantage of Eden Hazard's pinning of the defenders and finds himself in a little bit of space between the lines here in the weak side half space or the external part of the central corridor. The build-up for Portugal is very similar to their group stage matches in their 4-3-3 approach and they had deep fullbacks occupying the width in their structure which gave them some problems and had them struggle creating two versus ones and really drawing out the Belgium defense. Then we had our three-man midfield, one player just off our screen here holding midfield and Renato Sanchez playing as more as the eight. Then for Belgium, we had our front three players with Lukaku in the defensive phase, occupying the right side, allowing De Bruyne to play through the center in the defensive phase, taking away their number six, and then Eden Hazard on the left. Then Tillisman and Axel Witzel would then close the gaps between their front three and create a two three shape in their first and second line of pressure. So as we talked about the Portugal offensive structure, one of the main issues that they had was lacking the ability to create a free man in key position. And one of the one of the reasons why they struggled so much to do so is because of their deep fullbacks and lack of rotation between the lines. So as we see here, the Belgium front three were more than happy to let Portugal circulate the ball and not really progress up the field in any way because by the time Portugal would circulate the ball, Belgium would be able to shift. And we have our two holding midfielders on the two more advanced midfielders of Portugal. Then with Kevin De Bruyne taking away the holding midfielder, it gave Portugal not very many options in advanced area. So normally what, it, what a team would do was they would try and commit players in the first line of pressure to then try and expose 
this 2v1 situation via third man movement or just angling the two players to avoid the cover shadow. But Portugal did not do this with their fullbacks, which left a big space between their fullbacks and wingers. As we see here, the distances from fullbacks to wingers is very large, and it became very hard for Portugal to displace the Belgium players in their defensive phase. So another way we can work around this is Portugal could have been more aggressive with their central defenders and had them drive into the half space which would have caused a reaction from Belgium and would have forced them to commit players to then try and stop progression of the ball carrying center back which would have then opened up space for them to use with a third man movement but would have involved their fullbacks to play in a bit higher area. So without doing these little things or not circulating the ball quick enough to progress via the free man in the wide area, Portugal didn't have very much success in creating controlled progressions that displaced the Belgium defensive setup. And one reason why I think Portugal could have been more successful with this is because of the man orientation Belgium used in their defensive phase. And so this is something to look out for in their next match. How teams overcome this with Belgium pressing high. We can see they use a clear man orientation which in the defensive phase can cause problems but if a team in possession of the ball has methods to displace these players and attract them to then attract the pressure they can create free men further forward because of the man advantage a team in possession has with their goalkeeper. So we even see all over the field now, we, they defend with the back three against Portugal's front three. We have Tillisman and Axel Witzel as our two holding midfielders. And our front three of Lukaku, Hazard, and De Bruyne with our wing backs pushing forward to create access to the full backs of Portugal. So the Belgium defensive setup took care of the Portuguese offensive shape very well and it matched up for Belgium to use this man orientation in their high block very well and it limited the space that the Portugal team had in possession of the ball. When Belgium had to defend deeper, the key for them was maintaining compactness with their back five and then their four man midfield with De Bruyne being able to drop into the midfield along Witzel and Tielisman with then Hazard staying deeper on the left hand side creating the four man midfield and as we see Portugal didn't commit virtually any players between the lines in any of the central corridors which made it very easy for that for the Belgian team to defend against and with this disorganization they didn't really have much of a rest defense either they had a lot of players in the wide areas, as we see here, which led to a very individual basis for chance creation, which isn't very effective, but they almost made it work in a few instances when they started pushing in the second half and they subbed on some more attacking players. This changed a little bit, but Belgium for the most part looked com comfortable with the lack of intent behind the Portugal offensive setup higher up the field. Portugal in their high block, they went with a 4-1-4-1 or a 4-3-3, depending how you want to look at it. But here it's pretty clear with the two holding mi midfielders of Belgium staying, it was a 4-1-4-1 with Ronaldo at the base. And now they make up the, the numerical disadvantage with their wide players being the players that have the dual roles to press the central defenders as well as the fullbacks in the wide area. So this wasn't used by Portugal as much, but as the game progressed, they started to use it more and more, especially going down a goal. And one of the big determining factors on whether it was a 4-1-4-1, 4-4-2, or any other variation of this was the height of their double pivot. And it, like we said, if one of them would go forward and they would then play with a single pivot, then usually it was Renato Sanchez would be the player to track the run and then join the holding midfielder of Portugal to then try and prevent any free players going between the line. The last picture here now, we have Belgium, and now we show them not just playing a, a 5 4 1 in their low block, but now a 5 3 2 with staggering De Bruyne and Lukaku, but again playing very compact and limiting the space Portugal have in the central corridors between the lines with the three midfielders covering this space with their cover shadow 
which again led to Portugal dropping their dangerous players deeper to then just get a touch of the ball, which didn't make their offensive phase very dangerous because they had no players except Ronaldo in the advanced area, so they had no real means of influencing the defensive shape of Belgium. But that's the analysis, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed the multiple camera angles. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.